Geeks Mark Pimosa Geek, another Land Geek with a favorite niche real estate website, VanLandGeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, I am so excited. You guys are in for a treat because Landon Falk is just a gem of a human being. And to give you a little bit of his bio, he is a husband to his high school sweetheart, Leah, uh, new girl, dad, which is super exciting. Uh, connector and host of the top 1.5% globally ranked Beyond Curious, that's trademarked, podcast. His <laughs> life purpose is to create a more deeply connected world by catalyzing curiosity. Every week on his podcast, Brandon interviews incredible and curious humans, including Olympians, seven to nine figure entrepreneurs, New York Times best selling authors, TED speakers, and even an occasional FBI hostage negotiator. Decorated Air Force pilot, illusionist, Hollywood legend, NFL player, shark from Shark Tank, and even the man that invented the cell phone. He's also the founder of Curiosity Island, an immersive mastermind that specifically serves curiosity-driven and deep connection-driven entrepreneurs, creating community with their thought leadership. He's obsessed with playing spike ball, which I think I've heard of spike ball, has completed a marathon <laughs> with Spartan Ultra, which is a 34-mile, 60-obstacle race, types on a Dvorak keyboard instead of Yorty loves traveling with Leah, 23 countries and county, and loves being a dad. Brandon, welcome. Mark, I love you, brother. Super excited to be here. Thanks for the energy. I uh, love who you be, and this is going to be an epic episode. It, it really is. And, you know, if we rewind the tape, tell me a little bit about your early exposure to business and networking. Yeah. So... I, I grew up on the free lunch program in a school district that was one of the wealthiest school districts in the state. So I got open enrolled and I was always embarrassed the fact that I was on free lunch and my friends were getting picked up in really nice cars. So that's kind of like what catalyzed me to drive into go into business. But essentially the, the catalyst of the whole thing was I entered this business plan competition when I was 16 years old and I came up with a business plan for this food truck called the Sizzlin Ninja. It was the coolest thing my 16 year old brain could come up with. My, my email address was Asian Ninja 221 at gmail.com. Um, and it was the coolest thing I could come up with. And I ended up taking first place in this state competition with this business plan, found out I got to go to internationals and the cost of the trip was way too expensive. And I met a mentor at that time who took me under her wing and she's like, well, why don't I just show you how to fundraise for it? So before I knew it, I had this mentor that took this 16 year old with email address Asian Ninja 221 at gmail.com and was introducing me to the biggest players in her network. And she told me one thing that completely transformed everything. She says, if you ask for advice, you'll get or sorry, if you ask for money, you'll get advice. But if you ask for advice, you'll get money. And so she's like, I'm going to introduce you to these people. You're going to ask for feedback on your business plan. And once they've done that, you can ask if they would help and support your trip. And so uh, she ended up doing that. And that literally opened my eyes to like, holy shit, there's the hard way of doing things. And there's the easy way of doing things. And the easy way is always, how do you find the right people? How do you build the right relationships? How do you invest in relationships? How do you show up for people? And that's kind of led me down this whole path of having this podcast and Curiosity Island and hanging out with some really cool people and finding my way into really high level rooms at, at, at a young age. So just really grateful, really blessed. And uh, shout out to Brenda Campbell for taking me under her wing <laughs> when I was 16 years old. <laughs> yeah. Bre so Brenda Campbell, I, it's so funny because I actually give that same advice to uh, land investors who are looking to raise money and always, you know, start talking about your business and don't ever ask anyone directly for money, ask them for advice. And say, hey, look, I'm, you know, I'm doing this, and I've got this track record. But to take it to the next level, I, I, you know, I, I need to raise, say, a hundred thousand dollars. You know, knowing what you know about me, my business, what, what advice would you give me? Because I'm thinking about the structure like this. You know, maybe I give an investor twelve percent, and they say, oh, wait, twelve percent. Uh, I, I would be interested in that, right? Hundred uh, percent. And so, but if you just ask for money, it's like, whoa, whoa. You know, yeah. There's, I mean, there's a huge difference. This, we can go down this rabbit hole, but there's a huge difference between prescribing something 
versus it becoming someone else's idea. So there's a there's the difference between like a direct ask and an indirect ask. So if you ask for someone, it kind of engages our like fight or flight. Like, oh, I don't know, this makes me feel uncomfortable. But if you ask for someone, if they have an idea or what are your ideas on this, and then they share their ideas and you become a thought partner with them, that's really where you can co-create and lead to the outcomes that you're looking anyways, because um, you can envision together instead of it being prescriptive and kind of like overly forced. So 100% agree. Yeah, and when you talk about co-creation, I, I know that you like to talk a little bit about the IKEA effect when it comes <laughs> to business. So can you yeah. uh, elaborate a little bit more on that? Mark, you've done your homework. You've done your research, my friend. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, the IKEA effect. So um, I'll, I'll ask you this question, Mark. So when, when uh, actually... There was this study that found out that people valued IKEA furniture more than other types of furniture. Do you have any idea as to why they might value IKEA furniture over other furniture? So as somebody, I've, I've done the Colby, and I, I forgot what what it was, but like I'm one of the people that needs to hire a uh, like a handyman to put together my <laughs> IKEA furniture. And so for me personally, I have no you know, engagement with Ikea furniture. That being said, I can imagine if you spent the time and the instructions going through it and you put together your own piece of furniture, you're going to have that sense of accomplishment, that sense of pride, that's that sense of, I, I built this along with Ikea. So yeah. I, I think that it bonds you to that furniture in, in a way that oh. when you just buy something doesn't. 100%. You nailed it. I mean, this is why Build-A-Bear can charge approximately $3 million for their their teeny little Build-A-Bear with stuffed toys. I mean, think about it. They literally like, they instead of making the toy, they make the kid make the toy and then they can charge more money for it. The, the gist of it is just like Ikea furniture, just like Build-A-Bear, just like anything, we value what we invest into. Whether that's relationships, whether that's building something, you know, anything that you can co-create and invest into, we value more. And so that's another thing that I think about when I build relationships is not only how do we add value to each other, but how do we exchange and invest into each other's ideas? And that's really what makes people value their relationships more. So it ties exactly into what you were saying before about building feedback or building ideas, you know, if you turn someone into a thought partner, you're starting that process of investing into each other's ideas. And that's really where the strong relationships happen is when you're going through that loop of investing into each other. And that's where all the best relationships are made. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, it's interesting because I, I was talking to some friends the other day and it even, I don't know if you saw that documentary on, on WeWork. It's, it's, I guess it's not a documentary. It's actually a uh, a, a really well done movie with Anne Hathaway and Jared Leto on, on Apple TV about WeWork. And uh, the, the founder of, of WeWork is talking about creating this co working space that's very similar to that magical experience that people have in college, where they're all bonding together with this sort of this shared experience and the struggle of going through college. And so and I think back and to my closest relationships, those college experiences and my college buddies that I've had now for you know 30 years, it, it started, I think, in the midst of struggle and adversity and anxiety and the shared experience combined with lots of joy and, mm -hmm. and fond memories. And, and thinking about that and applying that to business, what, what do you what do you think about that? Because you and I, like when we're talking about business, we have shared problems, we have shared experiences, but then we also have, okay, where can we add value to each other's lives? And in doing so, that increases the, the trust, that increases the connection, that increases that those good feelings in a similar way that you know we can't really share a beer together, right? Yeah. Uh, but what do you think of that theory? Yeah, I, I love off? that. It's, it's, it's a, no, it's a great question. So uh, a while back, I'll, I'm, this I'm going to start with a story and this will lead back to where, where we're going. So a while back, I had been interviewing all these really high level people. And for a, for a while, I think most people tend to think about podcasts as the value being the audience. 
But what I realized is that the most valuable asset I owned was not the audience, but it was how I was curating the guests that were coming on my show. And I realized that there's a huge opportunity to connect the guests that have come on my show in really unique and value added ways. So maybe plant a seed in your mind as you're listening to this, you're like, Brandon, I don't have a podcast. Like, well, what are what are the ways that you could bring your high value clients, strategic partners, people together under one spot? Because that room is inherently valuable. And how do you co-create that opportunity for people to invest in their ideas and build relationships there, add value, and that can open the doors to all these other incredible relationships? So in 2021, I started hosting these guest exclusive events for podcast guests, and I would create an opportunity for people to invest in people's ideas and go through what's called vulnerability loops, right? So that's another thing that creates connection, which by the way, I would check out John Levy. He's been on my show. He's got a book called You're Invited if you want to learn a little bit more about this, but vulnerability loops are what makes us human as well. It's where I I need help and someone helps me and you need help and I help you and we provide different perspectives to get unstuck. And so part of the way that you can build onto the AK effect and do exactly what you're doing is create an opportunity for these high, highly curated groups of people to come together, share a story and, and observation. So this is part of what I do on, on Curiosity Island when people come to my mastermind events is I'll do something like I will have them journal on what is a what is a story of you living in your pure brilliance? Like what is an example of a story of you being in flow, of you sharing something that is fully aligned and the result that you created was amazing and it felt effortless. So one of the things that I'll do is I'll have people share that story and everybody else is listening and I'll create a collaborative Google Doc and I will ask everyone to pay attention to what this person's unique ability, what their strengths, their superpowers, their 4% is. And they'll everybody has a column in the Google Doc. So in one time, you get to watch six people making observations about this person and, and what their strengths are based on this story that they just told. And this creates this beautiful vulnerability loop of people sharing, observing, and being reflected. And there's this quote that you hear in Genius Network all the time that I heard from Genius Network originally, you can't read the label from inside the jar. Right. So it's right. like this is such an amazing opportunity to create these experiences where people are feeling seen, they're feeling heard, they're feeling connected, and they connect deeper with themselves through connecting with other people. So, anyway, it's kind of a long rant, but I think there's a huge opportunity for anybody listening to this. If you want a way to open the door from a purely value add perspective, don't forget about how you're curating people. You are showing up in the world, you are being someone, you're inviting people into your world, whether they're clients, strategic partners, and that group of people is inherently incredibly valuable. And if you can create an experience for people to go through these vulnerability loops, invest in each other, and then you get to own that spot in their mind as having catalyzed those deep relationships, it opens so much. So rant over. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I love it. But in, in that rant, you brought up a really interesting, <clears throat> excuse me, percentage, the 4%. Yeah. Explain that, please. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> I love that question. So uh, lots of people are familiar with the 80-20 principle, which states that 80% uh, of your results come from 20% of your actions. And I think that's really cool. That's really powerful. You can go read the 4-Hour Work Week. You can go read Perry Marshall's work and all this kind of stuff. Uh, actually, per Perry's been an amazing guest on the show, and I, he helped me a lot on this. And I think 80-20 is really effective. But when you examine 80-20 a little bit closer, you, you realize that 80-20, there's like a pattern within the pattern. So I'm going to try not to get too numbers based, but you can do an 80-20 of the 20%. So if 20% of your actions are yielding 80% of your results, if you examine that 20% and then you do an 80-20 of it again, what you find is that there's 4% of your actions that are yielding 64% of your results. And in my mind, that makes a lot more sense of how can I find my four? How can I find my 4% of activities that are yielding the majority of the results in my life? And how do I build a team? How do I build structure? How do I build an opportunity to stay inside of that 4% and delegate leveraging other people or, or systems and activities to stay outside of that? So that's the, really the whole goal of what I'm doing with, with Curiosity on everything I'm building is how do I help people find their four, collaborate from within their four, and create multiplicative opportunities from that? And it's been the most incredible work I've ever done on myself is uncovering what that 4% is and designing a life around that. So great question, Mark. <laughs> yeah. So when you, when you say this most incredible work that you've done on yourself, can you give us sort of a case study on, on the work that you did where you were able to see and, and really shine the light on your yourself and have that self-awareness like, Oh wait, this is my 4%. And yeah. And was it fact-based? Was it feeling-based? Was it a combination of that? Yeah, it's a great question. So 
I'll take you guys back to the end of 2021. I was I was working on a business with a partner that I really trusted and I won't go into the details, but it, it blew up, right? Like we all as entrepreneurs, as investors or whatever, we had those experiences where shit hits the fan. So at the end of 2021, I had this experience where I was like, well, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. So like everything blew up. So why don't I build from the ground up for what I know is true? And I realized that I had to sit and I had to ask myself the tough questions that are not easy to answer. And those questions are, what do I want? That's the first one. And that is the hardest question to answer because you can have somebody that's incredibly successful. I've interviewed so many incredibly successful people on my podcast that build incredibly successful businesses. They built investments and they they did it because it was based on what they thought they were supposed to do, what, what their family said they were supposed to do or what their friends thought they were supposed to do. So it's not what other people want is what do you want? And that is a hard freaking question to answer. So that was just one of them. But what, you know, what do I want? What is my purpose? What are my core values? What are my 4%? What are my, what are my superpowers? Who do I want to serve? These are all questions that I think in society, we think we can sit and journal on it and do an exercise and you're just going to come up with the answers. But like, I literally spent a year answering these questions and I've come up with like different ways that uh, people can uncover those. But I think the, there's, there's so much that you can do and we can, I don't know if you want to go this deep down the rabbit hole, but we could give some people some experiments as to like how they can actually go about doing some of those. That would be kind of fun. Um, but, but that's, that's the gist of it is that I sat, I went back through all the conversations on my podcast that I ever had. And I, I, I studied, what are the, I asked myself, what are the relationships that I most value? Who are, who is it that really resonates with me and why? Um, and, and that's an exercise I would encourage anyone to ask that question. If you want to go down this path, a really cool shortcut question to uncovering these 4% activities are who do you most look up to and why? And if you really want this to sit in, pause this right now, and don't listen to what I'm about to say, because like, if you take a second and answer that question, I'll tell you why I'm asking you that question. But the question is, who do you look up to professionally and why? Pause it if you want, or you can continue and find out why I want you to do that. Because there's two different ways that you can leverage a question. You can leverage the question for the question's sake, and then you can use a lens to look at your answers of that question in a different way. So what I found is that question reveals part of what your 4% is. Typically the people that you look up to have a world, they have a manifestation, they have a way that they're leveraging a skill set that you most likely have seeds of, but you really respect them. And that's why you appreciate them for that. So if you simply ask that question, who do I look up to and why? And you look at their strengths, you look at their superpowers, that's often an indication of some gem or some, some of your 4%. So I have like a bunch of those kinds of things that people can do, but this is the, this is the work that's super fun because I believe my purpose is to create a more deeply connected world. And I believe that that starts with connecting deeper with yourself. And then once you connect deeper with yourself, it empowers you to connect deeply with others. So another rant, but uh, hopefully, hopefully something valuable in there. <laughs> yeah. I think there's really a lot of valuable pieces in there to unpack in, in, in the way that these are really deep, meaningful questions. This is not going to be to your point. Like it's not a, a one day journal and it's, it's, you know, a year long thing. I'm, I, I don't know if I told you I'm going to Oregon for this darkness retreat for five days. Oh, that's and, epic. I think I remember you saying that. Yeah. And, and I think that's one of the reasons. Yeah. I, first of all, I like, like you, I want to do hard things, but uh, I think that's really going to help me sort of, you know, have that time and space just to really, that's all I'm doing is just trying to ask myself these, these, these deep questions and there's no distraction. There's no escape from it. It's just me and in, in, in the room in the dark. So I think that'll be really interesting, but to your point, like I know a lot of successful people. There's a lot of miswanting out there. And I think mm -hmm. that the listeners it, the, to this podcast, they resonate because they know their values and they like the idea of passive income without the headaches so that they can have not just more money, but they want more time at the peak of their life, right? That trifecta of money, time, and health mm -hmm. while they can do it so they can live their best lives. And so someone like young like you, you're a new dad. So talk to me about how you're incorporating being a new dad, being a husband. This is a very tough time of life. There's a lot of stress and an entrepreneur and how you manage it and how you use your 4% to leverage and making the best day, the best life possible for Brandon. <laughs> Wow, this is a fun one to unpack. And I'm still learning and I don't have the answers, but I'm experimenting right now. So I think the coolest thing about my my spending time with my daughter, Kaya, is like, 
there's she's like purely present purely source like no like it's so funny she's in this stage right now where she's discovered her hands and feet for the first time and it's like it's the coolest freaking thing in the world when she's like whoa what is this thing and like i'm putting this thing in my mouth and i'm i'm experiencing it and so i'm really excited for kai to become my mentor is like as much as i'm here to share some of the like things that I've learned along the way, I, I am excited for that stage of raw curiosity. I mean, I'm all about being beyond curious. What better opportunity for someone asking all these bajillion questions for you to think about things or say things in a weird way. But I think what what my relationship with my wife has taught me and what my my growing relationship with my daughter is sharing with me, and I think we it, it's that any anything that ever triggers you or, or makes you frustrated or kind of like, like is giving you an, it's, it's an opportunity to reflect inside of yourself. So I think that's kind of like this whole parenting journey, relationship journey that we're on is like, even if somebody cuts you off in traffic, like instead of getting mad, it's like, what, what, what is it about this, that this is showing me? Right. And so like, that's the lens that I have as I go throughout these experiences and these conversations is instead of wondering why, like blame pl assigning the blame but rather going inside and leveraging that as an opportunity to ask myself the deeper question and realize w what it's uncovering so i think that's like the, the ultimate container is like holding that space and being fully present and then in those opportunities where you you have an opportunity to reflect back on yourself to really analyze and see what is the what is this teaching me about myself that i haven't examined or seen yet so so interesting and it it's so funny because i actually wrote a uh, I do a like a, a weekly digest, and uh, Rossi, who is our was our chief problem solver, had a newborn, and she went and 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 moved on and is now raising her her son. But I actually wrote about her newborn being my mentor, and yeah. and it, it's so true. Like you can learn so much from these babies, and uh, and 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 being beyond curious about the world and, and and just the awe of it all and the novelty yeah. of everything. And somehow as we get older, we lose that, but babies have it. And mm -hmm. to get that back is, is, is so, so special. So, which leads me to, what does it mean to be beyond curious? <laughs> oh man. So I'll, I'll use a baby example for beyond curious. And this is like hilarious. I've never shared this on a podcast before. So there you go. Guest exclusive for, for you guys. Like beyond curious means I wonder what breast milk tastes like, but beyond curious means I have to try my wife's breast. I, I need to try it. Like what, what does it taste like? I need to know. Right. And so there's like, I view there's like two different kinds of curiosity, right? There's like people that are intellectually curious, right? They can sit and they can study so many different things and they're really engaged with the world and that's amazing but there there comes a point when you have to go past this surface level understanding and experience it for yourself and that's what beyond curious means to me is like i don't know if i can do this i am so excited i'm so i want to know but there is a point where i have to literally go past this point of i've studied up enough about this thing i have to actually go and bring this thing and make this happen so that shows up for me in in many different ways it showed up for when i did the spartan ultra which is like this crazy thing that i've never done before but it's like i don't know if i can do this crazy race that is you know 50k 60 obstacles but i have to go past the point of curiosity and, and actually make that happen i don't know if i can design a life where i bring people to a curiosity island they all live in brilliance bungalows and they're they're operating and collaborating from within their four percent and i i don't know if i can really bring 50 people to curiosity island to celebrate my 50 my 50th birthday my 30th birthday on february 21st 2026 i don't know if i can have that make that happen but i have to go beyond curious because this is important enough for me to actually go and make that happen. So that's that's really what what it's all about for me and the people that I interview is like, what is that thing that is so burning you need to know for you, Mark? It's like, you had this glimpse of dirt, of somebody saying how they can make money from dirt and build a passive income life around dirt. And you couldn't have, you, you studied up about it, but eventually you found yourself in those uh, rooms where you're where you're negotiating for a piece of land for that first time, and you made that jump, you went beyond curious to actually make that happen, and you built a life around that. So to me, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm kind of the same way with you, but I'm I'm not as extreme when it comes to being beyond curious. Like I, I like to try things and see what sticks and what doesn't. Uh, so I, I guess I am kind of beyond curious, but like to wake up and think, oh yeah, I want to do a Spartan Ultra. Like a marathon's <laughs> bad enough. 
Talk to me about like what made you want to do a Spartan Ultra and what was that experience like and what did you learn about yourself in in accomplishing something that difficult? Yeah. Um I always wanted to do it. So I did I did the Spartan. So for those that aren't familiar with Spartan, they're these obstacle course races. And when you start by doing when you start with their races, they have like a three mile, a five mile, and a half merit or three mile, eight mile and a half marathon is the main series. So I did that. Uh, and I always was like, that'd be really cool to really do an ultra one day. Um, but I, I knew that my deadline was having a daughter, right? Like having a baby is so much harder to train for. So like the moment that we decided that we were gonna, we were gonna start a family, I was like, okay, like this is my timeline for actually making it happen. So I, I set this goal to do this Spartan ultra. I texted my buddy of mine and he responded. I said, will you do this? This is my friend, Luke Greenkey. And he responded back with a screenshot of the purchase confirmation. I'm like, well, fuck, here we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now we're running the Spartan ultra and, and yeah, I mean, it was a lot of training and I got, uh, I had a knee injury with a, or my IT band went out kind of like uh, mid, not midway through the race, but like a few weeks beforehand. So I had to I actually couldn't train for the last part of it as rigorously as I wanted to. And, uh, we showed up and it was, uh, 31 degrees and raining. Uh, so like that was the, it was in, it was in Montana. So I think it was, I don't remember how much elevation gain it was, but like by the end of the track, we were literally running through like soup. It was like so cold. We were soaked. It was miserable. And you couldn't do any of the obstacles because like anything that required grip strength, like I, I got to up to a five minute dead hang with my, with my, with my grip. And it was completely obsolete because everything is slippery as shit. <laughs> you can't right, hold on right. to any of them, but you can't hold on to anything. So, so yeah, I mean, it was like when you're sloshing through that and when you're really in it, there's this point I'll say it was last, la thing is again beyond curious like the 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 way the ultra works is that there's two loops so the 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 biggest race before the ultra is the beast and it's a half marathon so for the ultra you run the beast loop twice um and so there's a point halfway through where you get to go and you get to access your bin of all your supplies and all the energy drinks and all that other kind of stuff that's where all the dreams go to die right because you're like halfway you're like a little bit more than halfway through you get a chance to sit down and that's where most people quit um, but, but like, that's the point to go beyond curious and really see what you're made of and really continue to push through it. So it ended up being one of the highest DNF rates of any Spartan ultra that they've run. They sent an email afterwards. Um, but yeah, we ended up, we ended up finishing it and jumping over that fire at the end. And it's one of those things where it's a mental upgrade, right? Like it's like, once you've seen yourself, once you've witnessed yourself do something, um, it really completely transforms the way that you show up in all other areas of your life. So I would encourage anyone to find that thing that they think they can't do and go do it and watch what happens to your brain. I'm super excited to see what happens with this darkness retreat for you. I'm sure that's scary, you know, like, like sitting with your thoughts and being in silence. So any, anyone that does that kind of stuff, um, it, 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 you, you receive infinite upgrades from that, from that point forward. So that's my little bit of my experience on the Spartan ultra. <laughs> Yeah, so the brain, while you're in doing that Spartan Ultra, wants to quit. You're completely exhausted. At some point, you probably feel like dying. How do you, how do you, you know, embrace the suck and go past that point? Because I think entrepreneurs feel the same way. Whether it's a financial hurdle, it's this is this is not for me. You know, we all have those doubts, we all have those fears, those anxieties, and it, it, at some point, there's that little voice in our head that says. What what happens if I get through that wall? Yeah. Um, so it's funny when I ran the Spartan Ultra, I was transitioning to Beyond Curious as like the brand. I rebranded. I was so misaligned with the way that my other brand was, and I was in this really like icky period of like feeling like I wasn't. I had outgrown who I was, and I didn't know what that new thing was. And I had just. I so the the. I did all this deep work on myself in 2022. And then I met this person named Alexander Watkins on my show. He named Wendy's Baconator and all these other, you know, Amazon Coca-Cola products. And she came up with Beyond Curious. And so I had had the session with Alexandra about revealing Beyond Curious several days before I went on the Spartan Ultra. And so when it got hard, when it got to that point, when I was like, this is terrible. Uh, I don't know why the hell I'm doing this. I realized that was my point to literally go Beyond Curious. Like that was literally my moment to like jump, to like to push past what I ever thought was possible and step into it. So for that entrepreneur that's that's listening to this, that's going through that moment, I know it's it's been said before and I, there's a reason why things show up, but it's really connecting to that greater purpose, right? Like I, 
doing this work on myself, I, and I'm, I, I'm a huge proponent of being flexible in your thinking, right? So like, I believe in having my pencil, my, my beliefs in pencil, not a pen, but as it, as it comes to understand right now, like my purpose is to create a more deeply connected world. And like, when I'm going through these hard things, it's always powerful to remind yourself of that North star that you're heading towards. Um, and, and making those micro calibrations and realizing that you're doing this for something greater than yourself. So whether that's, whether that's a, a, a life purpose mission or your family or whoever it is, um, that's another reason why connecting to that deep purpose is really going to help you in, in many different ways from your decisions to getting through those hard times that you're talking about. I, I love it. I, I think that's a really good segue into the AVE approach. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is kind of going back to the, the, the beginning. So again, connection to me is all about connecting with yourself and that empowers you to connect deeper with others. And, and so AVE is this approach that I developed that helps me to develop the relationships with the people that have kind of come on my show. Right. So like, who is I some, Again, beyond curious, who is I, some 22-year-old kid to show up in these high-level networking rooms and build relationships? Who is I to create this podcast and reach out to these high-level people? Like I I, I, I had to go beyond curious and, and figure it out. And so this AVE approach is literally the methodology that I use whenever I'm going to reach out to someone to build a relationship with them. If I don't know them, how do, how do you actually send a message that's actually going to encourage the Ikea effect. It's going to encourage people to build and invest in your ideas and start those relationships from a transformational, not a transactional approach. How do you do that? Right. Um, and so I realized that any relationship can be created if you take the right avenue. So that's where I made up the acronym AVE. It stands for appreciate value and end with a question. And I will say like some of the big guests that have come on my show that are coming to my birthday tomorrow, the day that we're recording this, Mark's coming to a, a birthday event that I'm coming to. Some of the biggest guests on my show I've reached out to have said yes because of an AVE outreach. So my question for you, as you think about this, as you listen to this is like, who is that relationship that you really want to build? Who is that investor that you want to start a relationship with or that mentor or that that person that you want to have on your podcast? And, and how might you think about leveraging this approach to being able to do that? Um, so, so the, the first part is a, so it's appreciate. So if you open your email inbox right now or LinkedIn or whatever it is, I guarantee you're going to see so many different approaches of people saying, this is who I am. This is why I'm so important. And, and you should listen to me, right? It's everybody's pitching their ideas and their stuff. So the idea with appreciate is the starting point is you want to do the exact opposite of that. You want to show up so completely differently in people's inbox that they're like, wow, this person actually took a time to get to know who I am and how I show up in the world. And so the way that you do that is specificity, right? And and the, the, I, I kind of have a little mini formula inside of this step. I call it the loved plus specific formula. So if I were reaching out to Mark for the first time, which I didn't, and by the way, this snowballs, because once you build relationships, you just get intros to the coolest people, and then you don't have to do the outreach anymore. But if I were reaching out to Mark for the first time, and I didn't know him, I would say, hey, Mark, you know, I listened to episode six or episode 43 of the podcast. And I loved when you shared that story about your dad being um, a grocery store clerk, and, and you had to learn about the power of um, like knowing the different price and how that transformed your experience and showing up on the show. Thank you so much for sharing that insight. I really appreciated it. So I probably butchered that. I did that hundred percent on the fly, but like, what is that one thing that applies only to the person that you're reaching out to that cannot be copy and pasted to anyone else that shows that you actually took the time to know who the hell they are. Right. And so it, it, that's, that's the final check you can do on your appreciation is if you can copy and paste that message and it applies to anyone else on the planet, you didn't get specific enough. So go listen to their podcast, go read a book, read something about their blog post. How do you make something so specific and appreciate them? Um, I can keep going or you can, you can pause me at any time you want, Mark, but I can, do you want me to go through the remaining ones? I, I, yeah. I want to, I want to hear about V and E and you know, it, it's because I, I have a, you know, as you're talking, I have a follow-up question to it as yeah. well. But, okay. Cool. Um, so but, yeah. So so again, we we stood out. We we show that we appreciated this person. We gave them a genuine appreciate. Then the next part is V value. What is the value that you can add to this person? So part of the the amazing thing that Mark and I have done is we have a podcast that's an immediate way to add value to people, right? And so this is where, uh, or maybe again, we'll go back to the earlier part of the conversation. Maybe you're curating an event to to bring these kinds of people the relationships that you're doing. So you might say something along the lines of like. Hey, 
uh, you know, appreciation. I wanted to run an idea by you and then several bullet points that outline the value and what's in it for them. So if I were reaching out to come on my show, I would say, you know, it's a top 1.5 globally ranked show. And I'm really grateful to say I've had some high caliber guests on the show. And then I would link to like this testimonial video of these people gushing about their experience. And then I would say, you know, I love making connections between my guests that make, that make sense. And if they've seen the kind of people that come on my show and the value that I bring, they're like, oh my God, that's super valuable. Um, and so, and then I think there's like, I'm, I'm missing the third bullet that I might include in that. So like that's an example of like me thinking about from their perspective what is the value that i can add or if we're going to the event route you can say hey i have an idea i'm curating an event it's specifically for this kind of group of people right and if they resonate with that group of people they're like oh that's cool you curated that and it's invite only i'm not charging for it but like i promise it's gonna be a transformational event boom massive value right and so that's that's the the next part about it is like making it all about them how do you think about how you add value to them and then the last part is e and with the question um the the emails that are the hardest to respond to, I guarantee this is the, the I, when I share this on the stage, this is what I share, share with people. The emails that are always hard to respond to are the ones that you don't know how to respond to, right? It's like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm just going to snooze this for forever. Or I never respond to it because like, it's so hard laid out. So if you end with a very clear question at the end, and nothing after that, it makes it very clear that that they it's easy for them to respond to. So I try to get it to the point where my first outreach is so easy that they can respond with one word or less. Um, not, not not less. That's not possible. I don't know how you uh, scratch right. that one word, at least one word. Right. So so um, a, a few things I'll do in this E and with the question that I tested. Right. I I like when I get I I've done campaigns that have received sixty plus percent open rates and reply rates on these kinds of things. Right. So um, the 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 way that I test it is um, is this specifically. It's a hundred percent up to you and totally fine either way. But what are your thoughts on me sending over blank or what are the thoughts on coming on my show? What are your thoughts on attending this event? Right. And so there's a, there's a bunch that goes into that. One is that whenever our choice to be affirmed is, is like re um, described, like hundred percent up to you and totally fine either way. Like no one likes being forced into something. So I use that almost all the time. Whenever I'm making an ask, I always give people an out because I honestly, why, what's the point of convincing someone to do something if they actually aren't invested in it? There's no point to it. So hundred percent up to you and totally fine either way. And then coming up with an opportunity to make it a very clear yes or no at the end of it. So if it's coming on my show, 100% up to you and totally fine either way, but what are your thoughts on me sending over next steps to come on the show? I'm not saying here's the booking link, grab a time. I'm I'm asking them to lean in and say, yes, I'm interested. Send me the next step because that's a lot different than throwing something in someone's face. So that, that simple opt-in, again, talking about the loop of people investing in their ideas, if they respond, yes, I'm interested, even though you're slowing it down, you're slowing down the relationship. Once they've replied back and said, yes, I'm interested, that significantly increases the compliance rate of somebody actually going through with it. So final recap, you take a second, you appreciate them, make it so specific that like they can't they can't copy and paste it to anyone else. Think about it from their perspective. What is the value that you're adding? How can you add value to them in their life? And then very succinctly come up with a way to structure it so that it's easy for them to end with a question and know how to respond within a yes or no answer because it's super easy and skimmable. So there's there's AVE. <laughs> yeah, so I, I love the AVE. I, I think this is really super tactical. But I think when you talk about it, first, first of all, you have to think about it strategically. And then you go down to the tactic. Uh, I think one of the problems that people, you know, well, at least I see entrepreneurs making, our clients making, is they, they want the tactic, they want the tactic. And they're not yep. thinking about, well, what is the tactic going to, why am I doing this tactic? Yep. What's the overall strategy behind it? And then I think the intent gets lost when you're just going in and implementing on this tactic. Right, mm -hmm. um, but that's not here or there. I'm I'm going on a on a tangent. What I be curious about is how do you see ChatGPT, all the AI tools, affecting our relationships in positive and negative ways? And, and one of the negative things I I'm I'm seeing is let's just talk about the the A strategies, like something to appreciate, right? Where I know when someone's actually written it's been chat gpt wrote the yep. email to me and it wasn't yep. them and i can feel it i know it yet you know look we only have so much time so it's like oh here's this great tool it's going to save me time um mm -hmm. how do you think about that and how do you think about things that when it comes to 
relationships and connecting that don't scale? Yeah, it's a great question. And it, it's something that I'm still answering. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to give a shout out to like one of my dear friends. He's been on the show. His name is Blake fly. Uh, and he leverages unexpected appreciation to build relationships with people all the time. I think it's so important to remember how to infuse more humanness into everything that you do. So I think Part of the downside of chat GPT is somebody's always going to be wondering, was this written by AI or was this actually, I think, right. I can say right now, but probably not in the future. There is still an opportunity to say, Hey, he really actually did the deep dive. Cause like, how would you train chat GPT to go and reference page 47 of a book? You can't right? Or like a specific timestamp inside of an episode. Right. So like, I think there's probably an opportunity for chat GPT to get that good, but like the kind of appreciations that I'll write, most people People are like, okay, he actually wrote this and it's a legit compliment. So the intention behind it is important. But going back to my friend Blake, there's a huge opportunity to like leverage video and voice messages in ways that like are hilarious, funny. And like there's, it just kind of infuses like the relationship. So like, for example, this might not be an outreach. I'll see if I can make it tie in my head, but like maybe I'm going on a walk and I see a massive pile of dirt on my walk with my daughter, right? I might stop for a second, pull out my phone and find my buddy Mark's phone number. And I'll pull out a video and say like, hey, Mark, I'm sitting here on a walk with my, my daughter, Kaya. Say hi, Kaya. She's like chewing on her fingers or whatever. I just want to let you know I'm thinking about you because I see this massive pile of dirt back here. And then I pan over to this massive pile of dirt. And it blows me away that you've made such a big impact in your life and other people's life by helping people buy and sell raw land. And I just want to let you know that I've been thinking about you and I hope you have an amazing day. And then I send, send that video. Right. So like, that is like, there's, there's, we have to go back to those elements of like infusing fun and play of video. Cause it's like, everybody's thinking, is this deep fake? Is this AI? Right. Like, but AI is not going to recreate being on a walk with your daughter and seeing a pile of dirt and stopping and telling someone that you're thinking about them. Right. So uh, as far as like leveraging the AVE, I think there's a level of specificity that makes it still legit. But the takeaway for you here is any, any relationship that you, that you have in your life, that's an important relationship. Instead, the next time you think about them, instead of just saying, Oh, I, I wonder how they're doing, stop and stop and tell them about it. Like send them a voice message, send them a video message. And, and that's how you continually build these relationships is that you just let people know that you're thinking about them. Like who wants, who wants to, you, we all know that person that shows up when they want something. Like I haven't heard you in five years, but then they want something, right? Like, but like, how do you constantly stay top of mind? It's that like, you know, whenever you're talking, like you mention your friends, you mention your clients all the time, you know, you finished a zoom call and you were chatting with your, about how awesome your client was just message that client say, Hey, I was just on a zoom call and we were talking about how amazing you are. I just want to let you know, we were thinking about you. I hope you're having an awesome day. See ya. Right. It's so easy. It's so simple. We have our phones, we have our emails to communicate this kind of stuff. And I think that's the lowest hanging fruit is going back to what does it mean to be human? And what does it mean to be human is paying attention to the relationships, the things that are important and taking a second to appreciate someone. So this this whole appreciation thing, it, it, it will, if you take nothing away from the AVE, but just the appreciate, just inject more of that into your life and send someone a video today. I would encourage you to pause right now, whoever you're thinking about, maybe you thought about someone in this episode, maybe you thought about a client, like take a second, send them a video, tell them what you appreciate about them. And you'll be amazed about what that unlocks. Cause they're going to be like, Oh, you know what? I was actually thinking about you too. That happens very often. Or, Oh, there's this introduction I want to make. But if you're constantly stimulating these, it's going to open a lot. So long roundabout answer, but inject more humanness into everything that you're doing and appreciate people as much as possible. <laughs> Brian, it, it, this, this podcast has been so, so good and so valuable and so enlightening. I recommend all the listeners listen to this one again. There are so many just gems. And if you just apply one or two things that Brandon has talked about, it's going to literally transform your life. You're going to have better relationships. And we all know that at, at the end of life, that's what we really look at. It's how's the, that's a really happiness, right? The quality of your relationships. And there's the tactics involved, but just the mindset that Brandon is infusing into life so that he's fulfilling his purpose. This is someone definitely to emulate. 
And yeah, I'm, you know, a hundred years older than him, but there's <laughs> still, it doesn't matter. I mean, there, there's still that deep wisdom and you, you can learn from anyone. Uh, and, and Brandon's one of those people that's just wise beyond his years. He's precocious. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, to, to express appreciation, man, it's, it's been, uh, just a, a pure joy and, uh, just getting to know you just, you're just a gem brother. So thank Same. you. Absolutely. I'm, I'm getting tingles down my arms from that. And I, I just, you know, every once in a while you meet a person, you're like, you're going to be in my life for a while. And like, just since the first time we talked, I'm like, this is a legit guy. Like he, he cares. He he's willing to be goofy or willing to just kind of share what's on top of your mind. You got the amazing anchor man voice, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like all the, all those things. So I, I am equally grateful for you and anybody that's listening to this show, you're listening to an amazing human and you're in the right spot. So I appreciate you too, brother. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks. Well, we're at that point now, and your your mentorship has been invaluable. But now I'm going to put you on the spot one more time and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Oh, man. Um, is this the part where I give like another exercise, or do I just kind of give – I'm are there so many different ways I can go about this. I would say um, my 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 tip is actually to just do what I just said. Like it would just it would create so much more connection, so much more relationships in the world. Just the next person you think about, send them a voice message, send them a video, and just tell them what you appreciate about them and why you're thinking about them. No call to action besides that. Um, if you do that over and over and over again, you're going to be blown away by what happens. So I would I will give I will leave that as my fun hack to create more connection and and wisdom in the world. Amazing. Amazing. Well, my tip of the week is going to be learn more about Brandon. Certainly follow Beyond Curious. It's, it's, and I, and I, you know, I'm not saying this to uh, grease my little pole. Brandon's in it. Like, I don't know how many podcasts I've done. It's, it's got to be close to a thousand now. And he researched me so well. He was asking things that no one's ever asked on any podcast. And so if you extrapolate that, and, and he's got, amazing guests on there but they go deep uh on this podcast it's it's that podcast is going to be one that uh you will definitely and just you can tell if you're just listening to brandon imagine him interviewing somebody how <laughs> how, how great how great it's going to be so definitely uh follow uh beyond curious and and listen there but uh brandon you have a a, a special link for us as well uh um, yeah, that i'm, um, I'm going to be sharing so we're going to try to time this. So Mark's episode will be live. Go check it out. The first question I asked him is about organic baby food. So if you want to figure out why we talked about organic baby food, if you haven't heard Mark talk about that, you go check out that episode. It was a good one. Thank you for playing pull out. So yeah, I created a special link for everyone. Um, it's a short link. This is a fun little hack too. I know you guys like hacks, but I bought a domain from Nigeria <laughs> because I wanted a short link. So the short link for me is bfong, bfo.ng slash API. So that's the link you can go to bfo.ng slash API. API for the art of passive income. And uh, what I'm, I'm going to put a few things for you there. And the reason why that's a, a short little hack too, is like, if you write a book, if you're doing a podcast, like what I just said there, that can't be changed now. It's going to be in the show notes. And so I hate being part of show notes or books where links don't work anymore. So I can always go and I can change this. So at least as of right now, here's what I'm going to promise for anyone that's going to go check it out is if you found value in some of these different ways, I've been able to uh, um, connect, uh, connect with people or build around my 4%. There's one thing I put together called my, my brilliance multiplication system. So how do you stick inside of your 4% and build systems around that? So I kind of did a walkthrough of some of my favorite automations and systems to help you stick inside of your brilliance instead of being bogged down by what doesn't matter. You can go check that out. We'll include that. Um, and then another thing I'll, I'll link up in that, in that, if you decide to grab that is episode 140A on my podcast. I did a deep dive. It's a three hour masterclass on answering those big questions. So if you were hearing like, Ooh, I don't know how to answer what I want, or I don't know how to answer what my superpowers are. I give a full breakdown of how to answer all those questions. So uh, we'll link that up as well. And maybe I'll toss in a few other bonuses as well. So go hop over to bfo.ng slash API, or if you want to ignore that, just go check out my episode with Mark on the show and you'll have a good time with that. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. The, the word that comes to mind is just generous. Just so <laughs> generous. So, uh, yeah, listeners, uh, I just want to thank you. And uh, just a little reminder, the only way I'm going to get Brandon to come back 
and and give us even more value and be even more generous with his time and knowledge and wisdom. If you do three little favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich, but do it, don't do it for the book. Just do it because uh, selfishly, it, it helps us get uh, even better guests. Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Schedule a call, learn how you can start building that passive income without any renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. And I know what you're thinking, the tuition, it ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed, you're going to make that money back 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Uh, learn more at thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Brandon, are we good? We're good. Thank you, Mark. I love you. Appreciate you. This has been epic. Love you, brother. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.